Hey everyone, it's Colin from GIY Guy. Thanks for checking out today's video. It's a beautiful day and we're talking treated lumber, specifically whether or not it's safe to use treated lumber in your raised garden beds. Now by all means, you are more than welcome to go to Home Depot, grab you some raw lumber and just start building. But unless you wanna redo that bed every three to five years, you're probably considering some kind of treated lumber. Uh, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the two main types of treated wood, which are heat treated and pressure treated. Let's talk heat treatment first. So in the lumber world, this is called a controlled pyrolysis process, which is a fancy phrase for we bake the wood. So naturally, wood is a hygroscopic material, which is a bad thing because it means it exchanges moisture with its environment. So on a super humid day, it's gonna absorb moisture. On a super dry day, it's gonna release moisture. And all of this is bad because it encourages rot in your wood and it also makes it easier uh, for pests to break into your wood because it's gonna be softer. So in this process, to kind of inhibit this hygroscopic property, basically they bake the wood at 130 to 200 degrees C. And this damages the hydroxyl groups in the wood that cause this property and makes it so that it actually has 50 to 70% less shrinking and swelling mostly because it makes the wood harder. So the best part about this is that it reduces the amount of water in the wood, which reduces rot, which reduces pests, and at the end of the day, you have a more durable wood without any of the chemicals. Speaking of chemicals, let's move to the pressure treatment section, which is where all the debate is, because this is where all the chemicals are. And to be honest, there's just not a lot of definitive answers as to whether or not this is safe to use in your garden. And so the best we can do is learn about the chemicals involved and the process involved and make our own decisions based on our own risk tolerance. During the pressure treatment process, wood is infused with a chemical preservative. Most of the time it also includes some form of an insecticide, usually of the copper family, think like copper sulfate, which is a popular fungicide. And it's these chemicals that are intended to prevent rot and insect damage. So I found a great video of the pressure treatment process on YouTube, but unfortunately it's copyrighted and so I can't actually put it in my video. But what I will do is link it in the description. It's about a minute and a half long, recommend starting it at 30 seconds, and it's gonna walk you through a quick video with some great pictures and great video content uh, showing you exactly what the pressure treatment process includes. But no worries, if you don't wanna check that out, I'll give you a quick rundown of the process anyways. First, the wood is loaded onto a cart and then it's pushed into this massive chamber, usually 120 feet long, somewhere around there, and about six feet in diameter. The second thing they do is pull a vacuum on this chamber. This removes all the air and they replace the air with whatever chemical preservative they're gonna use. After that, they increase the chamber pressure to 150 PSI and they just leave it there for several hours. This is gonna force all the chemical preservative deep into the structure of the wood. So after the time's up, they pull a vacuum, they get out all the excess chemical, and then they move it to a draining area. And this is kind of the red flag to me. They move it to this draining area and let it sit for two to 14 days, depending on how humid it is, and they just let it drip dry. Now to me, as a gardener, that's a red flag because it means that this wood is so saturated that the chemical is literally dripping off of it. So my first recommendation based on this video is do not go straight to Home Depot, buy brand new, brand new treated wood and use it in your garden. At the very least, use used wood or something that's been aging for a few months just so some of that extra chemical is leached out. Otherwise, all that's gonna go straight into your garden soil. So as I was researching, I came across a few quotes that were funny, but funny in the way like, why are we using this? Why is this something that we build garden beds with? And I wanna quote them exactly. So uh, give me one second. So the National Pesticide Information Center says, here's the first two warnings. The first one is, when working with pressure treated wood, we suggest you wear gloves, eye protection, and a dust mask. Okay, that's fair enough. Most lumber is probably gonna say that uh, just to cover their butt. The second one I thought was a little more interesting. Do not burn treated wood and do not use ash or compost from treated wood in edible gardening. So at this point, I'm getting a little bit skeptical. Like, why are we using this? And the third one I found was from the consumer safety sheet uh, for one of the most popular pressure treatments out there, micronized copper azyl. And this safety sheet said, do not use treated wood for construction of those portions of beehives that may come in contact with honey. So from these three statements, I'm gathering three things. Avoid touching it, avoid breathing it, and avoid having it around your food. So I guess now I have this question, why in the world are we using this in our food beds? <laughs> I continue to wonder this. Now when I planned this video, my intent was to give you information so you could make a decision based on your own risk tolerance. And that's what I wanna keep doing. 
So in this next section, I want to talk about the chemicals that are actually used in these pressure treatment processes. So like I said before, these boards are literally dripping with chemical. What chemical is that? So in the pressure treatment world, you've got two categories of chemicals. You've got residential approved and commercial grade. Now commercial grade is different because that uses some more heavy duty chemicals that are not actually approved for things like back decks, kids play sets, all those kind of things. So just, just keep that in the back of your minds. So let's start with residential. The three chemicals I'm gonna list are all environmentally friendly per the label on the wood, whatever that means. Definitely does not mean food safe. Um, they're all water-based, which means you can paint them, and they all have some form of insecticide in them. The first one on the list is alkaline copper quaternary, ACQ. Uh, this one contains copper and ammonium compounds, and most of the time, if you use pressure-treated wood or if you see it at the lumber yard, it's gonna have some kind of a green or blue tint to it. Right here, there's a green mark, and then also what they do is actually put all these dashed marks into the wood, these dashed dents, and it just helps the wood absorb the chemical better. So you can actually see some of those uh, right here along the wood. So that's just the pressure treatment color that you're seeing in there. Now ACQ is suitable for outdoor use. You can use it as a fence or a deck or whatever. Don't have to worry about the chemical all leaching out at once like the next one we'll talk about. Uh, one fun fact though is you have to use galvanized or stainless steel when you're assembling the beds or you know fastening the wood together because raw iron will corrode from the chemical. The next one is a borate treatment. So this is what's gonna look like it's stained blue at a lumber yard. And it contains sodium salts as the, as the insecticide or preservative. And unfortunately, you actually can't use this one outside. So most of the time it's used in construction, some kind of framing, uh, anything where you don't want insects to penetrate, but it's also not gonna be exposed to the weather very much. The last one on the list is MCA, Micronized Copper Azole. This is actually what inspired the video because I found this little tag at the end of my board, which all treated lumber should have some kind of indicator what it's, treat, what it's treated with. And on the back of this, it says Micronized Copper Azole. MCA is super durable and supposedly it actually leaches less copper than some of the other treatments. Yellow wood gives it a 15 year warranty. So if you're using it as a fence, you have a 15 year warranty if you're using it in direct contact with like a garden bed, garden soil, you're probably gonna get like eight to 10 years out of it, I guess. So moving on to the nasty chemicals, we've got commercial grade. These are ones that you wanna be aware of because I would not recommend using these in your bed. So I'm sharing these with you so you're aware of the names, that way you can look for those stamps or labels on your wood. So the first one on the list is chromated copper arsenate. This is CCA. And this was developed in the 1950s. It was actually um, banned from residential use in 2003 due to the presence of arsenic. <laughs> uh, so once people found out about arsenic, it's like, why would I want to put that anywhere near my kid or my garden? Uh, so they just banned it altogether. The second one for you is creosote, which is coal tar. And then there's also one called PCP, pentachlorophenol. And both of these are used in utility poles and uh, railroad ties. And I wanted to share that because I know a lot of people use railroad ties in their raised beds. And, you know, again, plenty of debate on the internet about whether that's safe or not. My take is if you let it age, you're probably in the clear, but I would definitely not go get brand new railroad ties and build a garden with them. The last one for commercial is methyl bromide. I want to share this one because this is what is used to treat wooden pallets. Um, there's two types of pallets. You have heat treated that'll have an HT stamp on it or pressure treated that'll have a PT stamp on it. So if you're using pressure treated, it's got methyl bromide in it. Now methyl bromide is very toxic as a gas, but once it's evaporated, once the wood's dry, the NPIC says it's not a big deal. And at such low concentrations, it's safe to use. You can, you can touch it and not have to worry about it. In my opinion, if it's super toxic as a gas, it's probably not super safe as a liquid chemical either. So there's your list of chemicals. Uh, use those in your own you know, risk evaluation. But the next thing I did was try to find some expert opinions on whether or not these chemicals in treated lumber can leach into your soil and also be uptaken by the veggies in your garden. The NPIC tried to answer this question if plants could take up these chemicals. And what they really concluded was it's possible, but there's not a lot of research that's been done on it. So I've got a couple things that they mentioned. The first one they said was they believe that chemical levels from treated wood may be higher in roots and fibrous plants, think carrots or potatoes, anything that grows underground, while other studies suggest chemical accumulation in the leaves. The second thing they said was that generally preservatives tend to move less in organic rich soils. And they actually cited a study that said carrot and lettuce plants actually absorb less arsenic 
in compost rich soils. So add more compost and your risk of absorbing chemicals will go down according to this. The next thing I looked at was whether you could use treated lumber as an organic farmer. And the rule is the NPIC says lumber that contacts food, animals, or soil may only be treated with substances on the national list of approved and prohibited substances. The only item we talked about that had a prohibited substance on the list was chromated copper arsenate. This one contains arsenic, which is prohibited in organic farming. Well, if you made it this far in the video, hats off to you. You actually wanna learn this stuff. I know I went pretty deep here with a lot of this information, but I tried to give you some quality information so you can make your own decision, not just an opinion from me one way or the other. So as we conclude this video, if you decide to use pressure treated wood, unless you're the type of person that throws caution to the wind and drinks chemicals for breakfast, I suggest you follow at least a few of these tips. If you're using treated lumber, there's five things you can do to reduce your risk. The first thing you can do is use a plastic or rubber barrier between your treated lumber and your garden soil. This will prevent any leaching into your garden. The second thing you can do is let your raised beds age a couple months. Uh, let them sit out two to three months in the elements. That'll leach out a lot of the excess chemical and then you can fill them and plant in them. The third thing which I highly suggest is plant your veggies three to six inches away from the wooden raised bed. Uh, don't butt your carrots right up against the wood. You're just asking for chemicals to be uh, taken up by them. Number four, this one's just good uh, grocery store and eating practice. Uh, wash and peel your, your veggies before you eat them. Uh, specifically your root veggies that are in direct contact with the dirt. And then finally, um, this one's just kind of a light recommendation, but you can use a dust mask if you're ever cutting treated lumber. Well, there you go. That's all the information I got for you in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like and subscribe button. Um, if you enjoy this level of depth in the videos, uh, let me know in the comments. It'd be really encouraging. Uh, if you absolutely hate how detailed I went with this, also let me know so I don't waste my time doing this again. But with that, keep growing yourself. I'll catch you in the next one.